But let me just say this. I, I've been more specific lately because, and I think this goes to our anti-war discussion we always have. You know, I, I, I'll do a tweet. Oh my God, even MTG agrees with this and this liberal doesn't. We've all done that, right? We've all, and why do we do that? We do that because we want to clown the Democrats so badly. Like we want to clown them. Right, and, and, right. and in a haste to clown how bad and pathetic Democrats are or Biden is, I might do that. But I don't do that anymore. I'm going to tell you why. It's not true. It's because it's just not true. I want to be factually correct. MTG is not anti-war. She is not in any way. She may want to pull money out of Ukraine and start some shit with China, but she ain't anti-war. Tulsi Gabbard may want to pull shit out of Ukraine and, and bomb some Muslims and Palestinians, but she ain't anti-war. And I think it's important to name that. That's all I'm saying. It feels, let me, I'm going to be honest with you. It feels like, Chuck, it feels like you're talking about two different subjects at the same time. So I don't know if you're taking the opportunity to also address the anti-war rally, but it feels like that's what you're talking about also. So because I saw a comment. So why don't you tell people how you came down on the side of the anti-war rattling? We're talking about the rally that was put on in conjunction with the Libertarian Party, I believe, the People's Party. Are you talking about the Rage um, Against the War Machine rally? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That, I was trying to think of the name, and so I was naming yeah. people to see if you can. So the Rage okay. Against the War Machine rally, um, it feels like some of uh, what examples you're using, the examples you're using, I should say, it's a better way of saying it. Yeah. The examples you're using are reflecting the rage against i saw somebody's comment in, in, in the in the comments it's reflecting the rage against the war machine rally so how, how, what was your and, and it, i already know your take i already saw it and i yeah. think i covered it in part yeah. of my segment so what so what so, how did you come down on that the topic of rage against the machine uh war rally or i forget the wording but the rally against yeah. the war is what they were saying they were about. It was called Rage yeah. Against the War Machine. Um, there were oh. some libertarian groups. Yes. I forget the name of the libertarian groups. I'll let you tell the story, but sure. Um, how did you come down on that? And well, if you want you know, to fill in the that story was a, big a little left more. Divider, right? That was a big left divider. <laughs> and I cover every anti-war rally in DC. I've been doing this for like 10 years, right? I cover them all. And I decided to sit out that one. Now, I didn't publicly say to someone, I had good friends who've been in the in the anti-war fight in the streets for years, who went, and on some level I get it, and here's why: because if you've been in the street for years, and you see the same hundred people for years, you get desperate, man. You come home like, yo, we're bombing everyone, brown people all around the world, or no one could come out. You get desperate, and you see it's not working. You're like, all right, so. You you ever see Jim Carrey? So you're saying there's a chance. If I, if I, if I connect with these people, there's a chance. And you get desperate. And I think uh, some of the really hardcore yeah, anti-war people, I think that. they fell to that. Because I feel that. So I get it. I'm not going to criticize my friends who went there, those who've been putting in the work. All I can tell you is why I wouldn't. And there were two main arguments against it. One was, All right, why? how can you stand next to XYZ speaker? And I think that argument dominated 95% of all discussion, right? 95%. I'm going to skip that discussion because wherever someone lands, they've landed. They, they've made their opinion. But I think 5% Meaning, of this. Go ahead. One, one second. Just to clarify. So you're setting aside those who were against it simply based on a specific person being there. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Um, I, yeah, I'm setting aside for our argument purposes because I don't mm. want to rehash that. We could spend an hour on that. And I feel like people have taken their sides and I think there's some good articulated positions. But when I, even when I went and I saw Jimmy Dore, he was arguing um, for that or the people arguing against it. When I saw Max, who I see at anti-war rallies for years fighting against Venezuela um, and, and doing great work. And I saw him, and I, I just simply disagreed with some of his analysis. And here's where I disagreed. And I believe they know this. Your keynote speaker, your lead speaker was Tulsi Gabbard. It's not about standing next to Tulsi Gabbard. It's not about some of her white or right wing views, which are, you know, legitimate points of debate. It's that she's not anti-war. Like you're having an anti-war rally that's not anti-war. So if Biden said, I'm anti-war, or he said, I'm for Medicare for all on occasion, he's like played around mm. with his language. I'm not going to put him up at a Medicare for all rally. I'm going to say that rally 
has a problem. Your lead speaker is Biden. He's not for Medicare for all. I have a problem with that. And I think everyone would understand that. Now with Tulsi, the first time I ever heard Tulsi speak, oh my God, she spoke about her. She was talking about the coups in Latin America. She, when she could nail a point, I mean, she nails it. I'm pumping my fist, yes. Oh my God, how is she saying this? A politician, she's nailing it. And you have a visceral reaction. And why do you have a visceral reaction? Because the anti-war crowd has not had a, a morsel in 20 years and she's giving you a fat steak and you want it and you eat it up and you're like, great. But guess what? Then you check under the hood. Then you do your homework. You do your homework, you find out she's pro-drones. She's anti-Muslim. She voted in 2014, those horrendous, heinous strikes against Palestinians, she voted for it. When the Barbara Lee Amendment came up to get rid of the amendment to go through Congress, it actually just passed this past year after 20 years. Um, the the um, authorization for Iraq that allowed George Bush to have a blank check and they were trying to repeal that, Tulsi Gabbard voted against it. She's for a drone, she's for torture. She, her record is a pro-war record. However, she's really good on, against coups and she's really good on talking about Ukraine. Well, why? Let's look under the hood. Because well, let's, let me, let me use those resources in other places, CJ. In other places. She wants to bomb so she, that makes people, her not anti-war. And I had the same critique. Um, I had the same critique of this rally. Um, I think I ended up different in the, at the bottom line part. Like yeah. we have a different uh, take on the bottom line part, sure. but I had the same critique of like, to me, Tulsi Gabbard should like she should not have been included as an as a rage yeah. against the war machine rally. If it was a rage against Ukraine, maybe would that have been would that have made you um, feel different about this? If it was rage against Ukraine war, what that would have made you feel different about any of the, the this point that you're making of how she's not yeah. really anti-war. She's just against um, the Ukraine war. So if you can address that. And then also some of the pushback I've heard, it wasn't my pushback, but I've heard pushback because I people told it to me, is that if you are anti-war, and you were, it's, let's say there's 10 wars. You're against all 10. But then there's a group of people that's not against all 10, but they're against one or two. Why wouldn't you want to uh, coalition with them on the two if you are against all 10? You get what I'm saying? Well, so if you can address that and also yeah. um, the first part that I, that I asked you about. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and I guess on the second part, and I'll, I'll move back. First of all, that was a great question about, you know, if they said the war in Ukraine. For me, no, because I know it's a shift of resource. It's like saying, okay, Obama did end the war in Iraq. Isn't that good? It's great. He ended the war in Iraq. Well, what did he do next? He put the troops in different places. He added mm -hmm. more troops all around the world, Afghanistan, everywhere else. Do I give credit? And he, they gave him the Nobel Peace Prize ridiculous. to Obama for ending the war in Iraq. I do not give credit. So I see Tulsi Gabbard and many other speakers, but I'm focusing on her because she was the most high profile. She was the, the lead speaker. If she wants to bomb, that was a terrible Muslim, decision. That was yeah. a terrible decision for them. Like, if you had her speak and she just wasn't the main part, that would have made more sense to me. Having a person who's not even anti-war as on the flat, that's what didn't make sense to yes. me. But go ahead uh, with, uh, with the uh, no, rest you're of right. You're right. You're right, CJ. And and here's the thing, for all the people and who've done great anti-war work, who were raging against the people who were sitting it out, they never addressed that question. It was always all the argument was, who can you stand next to and who can you not stand next to? They didn't address the question that there are a number of speakers who weren't anti-war themselves. And, and I think that's where you start. And I didn't hear that because I would love, because I know some people know this about Tulsi. I, I think there are a lot of people who actually don't know Tulsi's record. I'll give them half a pass if they're not educated on it. I once, once wasn't. But if you know it, then it's a different story. So here's the other part. I look at Tulsi as, as very much as in a white supremacist figure. And some of those individuals who are at the anti-war rally as a white supremacist figure. And even though, yes, they're Nazis in Ukraine, even though that, 
A lot of these people want to bomb other countries that are brown people, that are black people in Africa. I ain't talking about Africa. I looked at your record. You never said nothing about Palestine. You never said nothing about Africa. You never said nothing about Somalia. You want to start stuff with China. So the only time I see you speaking out is when we're involved in some where white people are at. I got to question what is your angle? And I do believe some of those people there, that was precisely their angle. They're the white supremacist lens of war. Yeah. And I'm, it's so we didn't set this up, but that's actually <laughs> you, funny you say that because the next tweet I'm going to bring up here is from Ajamo. And this is the critique he had of it. Because you, you, you say, you're you saying the perspective is a perspective of from a from white supremacy of war, meaning or as a lack or as a lack of a white supremacy critique added to your war uh sort of discussion. And that's what Ajamu says here, and I'll read it. It says the white left in the US is deeply delusional. Elements of the left actually believe a radical movement leading to revolutionary change will be led by white activists with black and colonized people <laughs> as black backdrops. Um, so that was his critique. And we covered this tweet. Um, I think it was Nick and I, or maybe it was uh, all of us at a round table, but we covered this, this tweet when we covered what was going on, the controversy and we had critique for it. And our critique for the raise against the war machine was similar to this, to what he's yeah. saying here, um, is that it'd be like it'd be like planning. Um, I don't know if that's the right analogy, but it it's well, I guess it's it's similar, but it's like. It's like if you're going to plan a rage against the, you know, cop city rally, but yeah. the organizers and the people that's putting it together and the headliners, are none of them are from Atlanta. None, none of them and have a police. stake in it. And they're pro police. I wasn't going to add police. that part. And like, they're like, pro-police, yeah. yeah. So not only if they're not really... They're not the people you who war you is... It's not the people who war is hitting the hardest and they're not even fully anti-war. That's the point. But go ahead uh, with your question. Go ahead. If, if, if the Medicare for All rally, which I covered, I was very happy to cover some great speakers. I covered two years of them. If Joe Biden said, I'm, Medi I'm for Medicare for all, we know he's not. But if he, let's say he said it, and he was a speaker to get more attention, would you then reject the Medicare for all rally, its entire premise? Say that again. Maybe let me before, because I, I have an if, answer, but let me make sure I heard it I, the, the I right word. the Medicare for all rally. Uh -huh. If it was announced, the, the organizers for Medicare for All rally had Joe Biden as a speaker <laughs> on the Medicare for All rally. Would you not? Reject, what would you do? Would you not reject the premise? I, of the I would rally? say this is a joke. I would say this is a joke, and um, I'm not. I'm not. But but in in your analogy, I'm not sure it's a apples for apples analogy because. Because Joe Biden is saying he's for everybody having health care, but he's not really for it and he's a lie. Tulsi is not saying she's against all wars. She's just saying she's against the Iraq war. And it felt like it felt like and, and even without this critique of this. I thought that the rally was misnamed because it felt like the rally was against the Ukraine rally. But it was just given a generic name, not specific yeah. to the Ukraine rally. That's what that was one of my critiques, even before all of this sort of uh, controversy. It, but go listen, ahead, you were going to chime in. Go ahead. Well, no, it certainly would have been better. It would have been better if they said rally against war in Ukraine. Like it would have been better if you're asking me personally, would I 
uh, of 10. No, because I, if I'm going to go to anti-war route, I need speakers up there saying we need to stop giving $3 billion to Israel apartheid mm. at that same rally. And that's what happened a month later. So I didn't, I didn't denounce anyone for going. I didn't say don't go. I had good friends go that I know were true to the cause, been doing it for years. I, I'm not going to denounce them because sometimes I do get mad. I, I will tell you this. I do get mad at the crowd that denounces who's never out there. That that does bother me. Like, like, okay, then mm -hmm. what's your what are you doing? But what are you doing people, in response? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like what 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 movement are you doing? Because you have to understand where it comes from. It comes from desperation. So a month later, there was a tremendous rally, and there were speakers saying, you know what? We need to shut down AFRICOM. And you know what else mm -hmm. besides Ukraine? We need to stop giving three billion to Israeli apartheid and talking about the coups in Latin America. And it was all under the, the same umbrella and no one was left out. It, did, it wasn't just about one war. It was truly anti-war. So while I do think it would be better if they named it, personally, I think the way to go is how we did it a month later. Yeah, and I, I, we, we cover both rallies, uh, RBN. That is, I, I was the one who did the coverage of the second rally, and I don't know if that has a specific name. But I just know Cole Pink was one of the organization anti-war. Yeah. It's another or a bunch of organization. Black Alliance for Peace was there. Black Alliance um, for but, Peace. They've been doing great work. Can I say something? Yeah. Black Alliance yeah, go for ahead. Peace and Cole Pink were against the Ukraine war a year earlier, and were out in the streets. You know. Um, they they were there uh, uh, about a year earlier in January. I attended that rally. So there were people there. Do we have the numbers we want? No. So what it comes down to with well, a real question is how do you build a movement? Okay. How do you build a movement? And there's some people who say we got to go to that person who says a lot of really white supremacist stuff because because we're desperate right now. I'm, I'm not of that um, opinion. I'm of the opinion we want to have a coalition with um it, with that, that's that's based in anti-racism, and I think it always comes down to this fundamental disagreement on the whole Fred Hampton question. It used to be Fred Hampton leftist, right? Um, the Fred yes. Hampton question, and and I, and I come back to that because people get that wrong so often. In in that the um the young patriots they already had an anti-racist orientation before they joined. And Bobby Lee from the Black Panthers saw them. They were already protesting police in the streets. They were already anti-capitalist. They were already anti-racist. And they had already worked, white people in that community had already worked with them from SDS and others. And, and for about four years before Black Panthers joined and saw how radical they were. Not only that, the Young Patriots organization adopted the Black Panther pat platform, almost identical, the 10-point platform. Like nine yeah. of the 10 points are identical. It wasn't this, oh, we're going to find these bigoted folks. People thought that because they saw the Confederate flag. And that's a whole nother discussion for, for another time. They got confused in history. But in reality, they adopted the Black Panther ideology, anti-racist, anti-capitalist. Then they joined as a precondition. And somewhere along the line of history, I see libertarians just de destroying the history of what the Young Patriots organization and the Rainbow Coalition really was. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's like it, this, this topic, it's, it's, I love the discussion. Um, people look back at movements. They look at back at historical figures. They look at, for example, the Black Panthers, uh, Fred Hampton. You look back at uh, uh, Lenin or somebody and it's, it's, it's uh, wishful thinking to think that during those times they weren't going through the same sort of battling of ideas the way we are. People think that ah, uh, just Fred Hampton just went up and people know he was battling ideas, battling concepts, just like we're doing now. Um, it wasn't just a walk in the park as far as idea, idea, ideological. Now we are all for it but at the time they weren't they were hated mlk was hated there was polls taken he was hated at the time now people love uh muhammad ali at the time they hated muhammad ali at the time so um exactly yeah so i'm, I'm gonna pass it to you for your final words on this topic then okay. we're gonna move 
to Cop City. But what's your final words on all of this, what we've been talking about? Go ahead, sir. My final word is I'm going to end with one of my favorite stories about the Young Patriots and precondition to their alliance. Bobby Lee, who's a Black Panther worker, right-hand man of Fred Hampton, He's leaving a meeting. He was silently meeting with Young Patriots organization. He's trying to figure out, should we do an alliance or not? Should I tell Fred Hampton or not? And he leaves. And he's being targeted by the police. So the police come at Bobby Lee and they get him against the car and they arrest him. And all the Young Patriots come out of their building. And they're saying, you better get your hands off Bobby Lee. You better get your hands off Bobby Lee right now and they surrounded the police car. They came out and forth, all these white people. And the cops let Bobby Lee go. And Bobby Lee's like, these are some white people I want to mess with. These, these are my kind of white people. And there was a trust building. That was a key part of a number of parts of trust building before Fred Hampton. He brought it to Fred Hampton. Let me tell you about these crazy hillbillies. They're anti-racist. And, <laughs> you know, they just stopped the cops from arresting me. So I have to ask myself. These civil libertarians sometimes that are out, these white civil libertarians that I see on their Twitter that are writing really racist, often white supremacist stuff. If that happened to you, CJ, if that happened to Black Alliance for Peace, CJ, are they going to come out in mass and tell the cops to get their hands off you, CJ? Are they going to say that to the, the folks at Black Alliance for Peace, CJ? I don't know. But that's what happened before that alliance took place. And I don't see a lot of the, the white libertarians making the necessary adjustments that I saw the young Patriots make before that coalition was built. Yes. And maybe this is the first time I know this is not the first time you, you've been on my show several times, but it's right. been a long time. Yeah. It's interesting. The comments about you here is interesting. People love you or hate you, I guess. No, but or maybe no, they see hear- I want to. I, I think hear the it's. I think it's your. Like I think me. it's your take. I think it's your take on something. I'm trying to figure it out here. I'm trying to follow the story. Tell me, tell me the critique. So, that why people don't, don't why, like so people, people, if you have your critique of of uh, Chuck, what is your critique of what? Um, if I'm saying something so, wrong, oh, it's I'm about the rage. The Ra- you, you got a lot of response about the rage against the war machine. It's not the ADL. Okay, so I know that part at least. Right. The rage against but, 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 the war but, 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 machine stuff is listen, what... I know we're in a um, tribal word, world, CJ, yeah, but what I want to know is from critiques, I, I take critiques. What did I say about Tulsi that is factually incorrect? What 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 part of my critique was wrong? That's what I want to hear. I'm I'm happy to dialogue, but I didn't he hear said any what, dialogue on that. One, one of the comments, not specifically about Tulsi that I see is that who is who were the racist speakers that you're talking about? Did see, you see? Here's I don't. The thing. Vi- vi- I don't vividly remember thing. you saying there was a racist that spoke at the race. I don't remember you, know, you, you know saying that, want, but if you did, you know what I don't want to do. It. You know what I don't want to do. I don't want to devolve in that discussion because there's been so much part of that. That discussion's been had. Oh, this one's racist. This one's not racist. That is so played out. Oh, I am asking people, so I am did asking you make people. a comment and? And somebody obviously in our in our chat knows a tweet you made that that's what I'm because that's going over my head. So obviously something else happened that they're referring to. Is that what's going on, or, or something you well, said know. today? Okay, I, I don't know. I can't get it. But I don't want to discuss anything under than my main critique, which hasn't been exactly. discussed. Why are there exactly. why are there pro war speakers at an anti war rally? That's my main critique. Everything else has been beaten to death. And everyone is taken aside. That's the, I want people to deal with that because all of the people who were defending hardcore Rage Against the War Machine, they did not deal with that critique. I did not hear, even people I love, I've seen on the street, did not say, yes, Tulsi Gabbard is pro-war, except in this case, let me sift through that. I didn't hear from them. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to get... Like yeah he, okay here here's one here's one of the here's one of the critiques mm-hmm. you said she and this is a Tulsi uh, yeah you said she was the main speaker for one mm-hmm. and yeah. if you can't even do common cause organization how can we advance any cause so there's the basic question this is how, what I'm taking from it how do you build coalition with people of different 
opinions, how does that look like basically if it's not this, if it's not I, rage against the war machine? I, I think I think the question is um, flawed ahead. because the, the question says common cause. I don't believe Tulsi and I have a common cause. Mm. See, I think that's that's the problem right there. We don't have a common cause. She wants to bomb Muslims, and she believes, and if you actually listen to her, go deep into her speeches, she believes when we have a coup in Latin America or when we spend money and resources in Ukraine, it is draining resources from other wars, from, from, from bombing more Muslims, from other places. She doesn't see it from an anti-war perspective, a human perspective of this is immor immoral perspective. Tulsi sees it from a, we're draining American resources that we should be putting here, very similar to Obama taking troops out of Iraq and putting them elsewhere. And when I mention that about Obama, leftists understand what that is. They understand that. And what I'm asking is to apply that same analysis to Tulsi Gabbard. Absolutely. It's just, uh, just one person just saying they wish you had attended. Sabi from RBN attended uh, that rally, the first one, and then I, I, I covered the second one. And then um, here, Zachary I says, you're too tribal. I don't know. What tribe is he with then? I don't, that's the part I don't know. When I'm he not says tribal. You're too tribal. Yeah. You know, you know, CJ, you know what gets me in trouble, CJ? I'm not tribal. I'm going to make sense. People told me not to fuck with RBN. Let me just tell you that right now. You uh -huh. don't think people hit my DMs, say you really yeah. shouldn't fuck with RBN? People have said that. But you know what? The reason I I I, I love what you all do is because you come with the facts. Like when I listen yeah. to your stuff, you come with the facts. Does that mean I got your same style? I don't. I won't lie. Sometimes the way you, you're you hitting somebody, I'm like, oh, I ought to come a little different. No, no, we, we get it. We you get know? it, yeah. But, it's not but for everybody facts. all the time. But your facts are tight. Your facts are tight. So, like, when you what you say after, the facts are tight. And if the facts are tight, then I then I, I can't refute that. And that's what I tell people who disagree with me. I'm not in the tribe. I will go what where I believe makes sense in my own head. Now, here's where is a fundamental disagreement that sometimes I have um, with, with the left, and might even include R R B N. In that we agree on the same thing, but we may disagree a little on the strategy. So whereas a lot of people on the left, the Democrats are so pathetic, just so, so pathetic. I can't think of a better word than pathetic. They're so pathetic and demoralizing that you're going to grasp for any straw. And what happens is we might grasp from people with uh, 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 you know, bigoted leanings and all of those things. And I believe we should pull, peel off, try to pull, peel off 10% of liberals. I don't believe every liberal is is um I don't believe, I believe there's some that just need to be more informed. And the reason I say that is because I'm a former liberal. I'm a reformed liberal. So if I have to give up on all liberals, I'm giving up on my former self. You see what I'm saying, CJ? Like there's t I if if we could peel off 10% and not call them all stupid all the time and just be like let's give you more facts on policing. What if I told you only 8% of all police calls were for violent crime. Did you know that? Let's educate the stuff that you do all the time, you educate. But sometimes when you hit somebody a certain way, they won't hear the facts afterwards. I'll listen to your facts afterwards. They might not have listened to your facts afterwards. So I think the fundamental disconnect is sometimes I try to peel off 10% of liberals and sometimes a lot of leftists have given up on liberals. Just say they're hopeless. Yeah, we we're we're, we're one of them. We're we're not interested in convincing partisans, whether Trump or we're not convinced. We're not we're we're not we're for the people, the largest group, which is the non, the uh, more regularly non-voting group, and that's the path that we believe to the quickest uh, sort of liberation, freedom, revolution, whatever word um you're going to use so that is that is a critique or a difference uh, between us and you that we were already aware of i mean it's it's, it's easy yeah. to, to point out um those differences then that maybe that's why somebody kept asking me to, to ask you about progressives uh because of that as if we don't know that chuck knows the difference and we know the differences um we have we don't believe in necessarily trying to peel off anyone um, as a target. 
meaning we're not targeting Trump. We're not targeting liberals. We're saying this is the message and the message is going to resonate with anyone who the message resonates with. And that's the person. That's how we look at it. We go, this is the message because the message has to be unfiltered because previous messages has been so co-opted. So we have to give a message that is so undeniably and unquestionably and uncooptably. I'm making up that word cooptably, yeah, yeah. but you get what I'm saying. We give a message that cannot be misinterpreted, co-opted oh, yeah. on you purpose. That. that is, yeah, that's on purpose. I know. Um, because that's our space. And it I is know. some of our allies like you who are supposed to be in spaces where you are talking to those. That's not our role. Our right. role is to push the envelope to the to the maximum limit. That is RBN's role. And yeah. then we have allies this year to do other roles like yourself. But go ahead. You were going to say yeah. one more thing. Then we'll finally move on to the next topic. <laughs> well, here. you know, I know we're supposed to focus Cop City, but I'm so happy we're having this discussion. I really am. And I welcome all critiques of people who disagree with me um, because this is a really important discussion to have on the left. And it's, it's really important at this moment in time when uh, uh, someone like Dr. Cornell West is running and runs for his unprincipled stances from free Palestine to reparations to human rights to, to, to his ending war that I believe at no point uh, um, since that we really have to get, get together and on the same page. So I'm glad we're having this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to peel off liberals, so I'm going to be a little bit nicer <laughs> than I hear in your mm -hmm. spaces, right? I don't use shit lib, right? I don't even mm -hmm. say the squad. And I'm going to tell you why I don't say the squad is that I do want to, I, I understand that we needed them to vote as a block and that whole experiment failed miserably. We get that. I agree with that. But if like, if, if a Cory Bush does steadfastly vote against Palestine and, and some to death threats and has never wavered and is able to bring in some liberals through her stance and had millions against her in her, her next piece, in her next election, and still win. I think that's significant from a mobilizing perspective for freedom for Palestinians. And so I'm, I, I'm, I may not get stuck on, well, electorally, did I agree with every vote she made or things like that. I believe she's a, a, a positive force. Though, and, and, and let's she's probably the most radical voter in, in Congress, I would guess. She's a positive force towards Palestinians. I want more people who are in the mainstream to adopt my position and your position for a free Palestine. And I think she could be a carrier of that. Does that mean I believe in the electoral system is going to solve our problems? Of course it doesn't mean that. But I do believe there's something about a mobilizing effect and mainstreaming an issue, which I think Dr. West could do very well, by the way, that there's some merit to. There's some merit to it. Because, how, then, you know? then how do you address this part? Um, Go ahead. I'm curious, how do you address this? Because yeah. it's almost like the Inflation Act that they say that it's a climate agenda, but it also goes against climate. Like It's like in both. It's like Climate shit and anti-climate stuff is in is in uh hang on a second. I got some message uh popping up here. So with the example with uh Corey uh Bush, you say there's a sort of mobilizing effect because she is, you know, even though her votes aren't consequential, I mean they don't make or break whether the legislation just a person in Congress speaking to this particular voice that is something good yeah. but but then here's the problem that little to me and i'm going to describe it as a little bit of good is outweighed by the bad which is adding numbers meaning sheer numbers to the democratic party who is zionist that is bad that is markedly bad. So the little bit of good you're getting, in our opinion, out of a squad person, what we would call virtue signaling about Palestine is outweighed, far outweighed, because we've added, if the Democrats are 200 and we got 50 progressive, now you're 250. Now, instead of having 
power of 200 people, you have power of 250. Now, 50 of them are against Palestine, but they vote as a block. It's yes. it's a team. So how do you address that part? Because regardless so, if you're trying to or not, a unintended consequence is you're adding to a team that's pro Zionist. The leadership is pro Zionist. So how would you address that, uh, Chuck? Well, I think you have to articulate the difference. But I think, you know, I had a professor and I do this for everything. And I do it with RBN a lot. I had a professor in college. He would say this. If you disagree or you compare two people, he said, what's the point of connect? And what's the point of disconnect? And a lot of times I'll listen to RBN. I'll be like, what's the point of connect? Oh, shit. We agree on all the same issues. They're talking about the right shit. What's the point of disconnect? It might be a lens. And here's where you are operating from an electoral lens. And almost everything you do is electorally that fear if Cory Bush is loud on Palestine, that all these people who outside the system could make change will get consumed by the system and then we'll lose um, um, votes and energy. And that's real because that shit has happened. Like that's happened, right? So you're not coming from a place like that, that doesn't have evidence. But I think it particularly in some issues, particularly when you're talking about human rights and, and Palestine, that if we're ever going to get to a place where we stop that funding, there's going to have to be at least some segment of the dem mainstream Democrats who come on board. I believe like if it's ever going to happen, there's going to, it, it can't just, it won't just be from the outside, it's from a mobilizing perspective. So I'm a media guy. You see, you're seeing everything from an electoral perspective. I'm seeing it from a mobilizing perspective. I see Dr. West from a mobilizing perspective, he could get on a stage and if he gets 15% and talk about these issues in front of the country and say Trump and Biden, get off the crack pipe, there are no two sides to Palestine, like he did RFK, that's mobilizing. He could talk about reparations in front of all these white people, that's mobilizing. So that is like my perspective and I get your perspective, but I think we have to weigh them against each other and have a, a good discussion and debate like we're having right now, CJ, I love this discussion. Yeah, because I, I feel like what I'm describing is mobilizing because uh, primarying the squad to me is mobilizing on the path toward liberation because they are an impediment to that. Yes. So that is that. a mobile. Yeah, so that is a mobilization. But we do got to get to this because I got haven't hard. You got to see I got a heart out in 30 minutes, so I do want to dedicate at least it. 30 minutes to yeah. Cop City because I feel like it's probably going to need at least 30 minutes. Yeah, you this. got it. Um, and then um, I'm curious. We should have this discussion, like, where that's what the point of it is, where I we just right. talk about. And I'm curious, who, who do you think who is more closely aligned with your perspective would be good also? to bring on I, I've, I've been feeling tribeless i'm going to be honest with you i'm going to feel i feel tribeless because a lot of times i see people who i really respect they go at each other and that includes y'all <laughs> and you'll be bumping heads with someone i'm like oh I, I love the work you do i love the work they do i wish y'all would kiss and make up in the dms like i feel that sometimes and and, and it's not saying they the critiques aren't valid but if you're asking me i'm a little old school like could y'all hit the dms and and and, and punch it out and fight it out, like sometimes I feel that way. So it's hard, I feel more than ever, I almost don't have an exact tribe, but I, I fuck with a lot of people because I love what they're doing. But it's very difficult in this environment, it, it really is. But I think Cornell West could be an antidote to that. Cornell West is the antidote to that. And I'm noticing even, even what we will call the professional managerial class, the NATO left, who we would call the NATO left, um, they're starting to get on board with Cornell West when in the beginning they weren't. They were yeah. trying to play this Marianne Williamson. They were very reluctant. Now they're on board with Cornell West. And it could be partly because Cornell West is actually getting their videos with Cornell West getting them the most views. <laughs> for example, for example, Tim Black. So it could just be a money thing. Whatever brought him here is bringing him here. It could be because Tim Black, for example, every other video except for Cornell West, all his Cornell West videos are getting 15,000, 20,000, 25,000 views. 
every other video is getting 5,000 or less that he's doing. So, so, so what, it so could what? be just a thing of, wow, wow, this, I thought I needed a Democratic candidate to talk about, and that's the only way I was going to get views, but this is a different way. I'm noticing what Jordan Sheridan do. Isn't Jordan that Sheridan videos yeah. on Cornell West yes. gets way more views than every other video he does. Go ahead. You were going to chime in. Well, I think that that's great because in a way, Trump was a cash cow for the networks. And because he was a cash cow, he was able to set the agenda, anti-immigration agenda, whatever he talked about, they covered because they would there was profit in him. And if there's profit in Dr. West, oh, my God, wouldn't Dr. West versus Trump on a stage be bananas? But if there's profit in Dr. West and coming in and he's talking about human rights and elevating human rights and the profit motive and the human rights and ethics collide, even for a short period of time. Well, let's take advantage of that. That is uh, true. But to uh, to speak to another point you made, and I just remember the point, um, we these discussions we want to have, and I do want to plan one where we're talking about the differences on the left. Yeah. Um, it's 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 key to understand our perspective that there is a certain point where we're saying this is actually not infighting. We are actually not on the same teams in the same sense that you were saying about the rage against the machine. Yeah, we have that perspective about a lot of what we call shit libs. Like yes. you are so far to our right that this is not a we just need to settle our differences and come. This is not that. This is not that. And there's a lot of the professional managerial class on the left who falls into that category where this is not like all we have to do is resolve this issue and then things are. This is a you're not your. We consider you a white moderate actually, and that's not an ally. If you are that's considered true. a white moderate, you're you're not an ally and. We put, I wouldn't say Corey Bush is in there, but definitely AOC is in that, squarely in that yeah. category. Yeah. You are not sure. at all an ally to us. 